Hello Year 9, it is Miss Hadley here and I am really excited to be sharing this video with you today and talking through the GCSE option of religious studies with the exam board AQA. Now this video will obviously explain the content of this GCSE, what it could lead on to, but more importantly I want to address well, why choose to study RE at a GCSE level in the first place. And to do that, I'm afraid I'm going to have to rewind 70,000 years to the beginnings of human evolution and the beginnings of our species. Now, I just want to start by a disclosure, really, that different religions, as we know, have different answers, different responses for where human beings came from and creation itself. Now, the reason I thought we'd start here is because we live in a scientific era. The 21st century, the century that you have grown up in, has seen religion sometimes be rattled by and be in conflict with scientific explanations of human development and creation. The Big Bang Theory, for example, and Charles Darwin's evolution. But in the religion GCSE, it's not so much about a discovery of the truth and which religion has got it right. Instead, it's looking, yes, at the beliefs, the practices, the ideas of religion, but also how they shape society because they very much still have an impact on the world around us. So let's rewind time then. Let's start 70,000 years ago to a time when nearly all scientists, historians, people who study religion, believe the beginnings of human connections with God slash gods had begun. So 70,000 years ago, this was before year nine, humans had even left the continent of Africa to colonize, to go live in other parts of the world. This is when we believe that humans started to recognize the existence of the divine, something supernatural, something other than, than ourselves, sorry, around us. And that is because from the moment when humans had evolved the capacity to talk in more than grunts and noises and, and think in abstract terms rather than just seeing very obviously what's in front of them, food, water, fire, they started to, and we know this from cave paintings and markings of skulls and burial sites and evidence of rituals, to believe in things called spirits of what we would recognise as gods. So you have to imagine living 70,000 years ago, not in the 21st century, and having no scientific explanation or reason for all of the natural events, so all of the everyday things that are happening around you. Now, if you looked out the window and it was raining, maybe thundering and lightning, sometimes we're scared of that, but to us it would seem quite normal, quite regular, quite easily explained, and your science or geography teacher could tell you a bit more about that in depth, more than I ever could. To a cave person, to these primitive people, those events must have seemed phenomenal, completely unexplainable. And in order to help understand the world, uh, the world sorry, around them and to reason why all these things were happening, like day turning to night or the tide flowing, primitive people believed that everything in this world was inhabited by a spirit. A tree had a spirit, the sun had a spirit, the moon, the stars, an insect had a spirit. And it was those spirits that set those things into motion. Now, looking around us now, we live in a multicultural society. Whilst a select few might still believe in this kind of multi-god system, this spirit system like early primitive people, we know that religion and different religions have changed. They're widely varied, okay? Um, some may have some common denominators, but actually religion in all different parts of the world affects society slightly differently and it's extremely relevant to study. So why study religion then, even if you yourself are not inherently religious? That does not matter because to study religion is to study human nature, human history, human ideas and development, essentially what it means to be human, regardless if you believe the religion holds truth or not. By studying religion, it gives us the ability to recognise ethical, so moral dilemmas, the differences between wrong and right throughout the world, and how each religion attempts to respond to these problems. 
Within this GCSE, you will be challenged with questions about belief, values, meaning, purpose and truth, enabling you to develop your own attitudes towards religious issues that are founded in knowledge and understanding. This means that you will gain an appreciation of how religion, philosophy and ethics form the basis of our culture and mould the world around us. And I know that sounds extremely hardcore because it is. We are dealing with huge existential topics regarding our existence, our nature, our purpose. And as such, this GCSE offers you the opportunity to develop your analysis, your crit critical sorry, thinking skills, and the ability to work with abstract ideas, leadership, and to be able to research. Because even if you form your own opinions in RE, they need to come from somewhere, they need to be justifiable, they need to be evidenced. This is because this GCSE, like other subjects you will have the opportunity to choose, it is an academic subject, it will require from you to practice okay, your essay writing skills, to make sure that you are learning and revising the knowledge. It is not as simple as just writing down I do and I don't believe in this because it's far more complex than that. Religion is far more complex than that. So where could studying RE take me? If that wasn't enough of a reason to choose RE in the first place, what is the next step after you completed your RE GCSE? Now, religious studies will equip you with the knowledge and the understanding you need to navigate through our multicultural society and ever more globalised world. We no longer live in a society with just a singular religion or even no religion, okay? There's still a wealth, even in Folkestone, if we look around, of different religious beliefs, views and practice. And it's important to understand those. Further education-wise, so I'm talking about university or A-levels, you could go on to study philosophy, religion, ethics, sociology, psychology, so the study of the mind, criminology, law, and even things like English and history that require you to write essays, okay, and employ those critical thinking analytical skills. A qualification in religion would be a great help as well to any careers that require travel, especially to parts of the world where the religion is different perhaps than the one that you've been brought up with or the one that you're most familiar with. So this would work tremendously well if you're thinking about going into journalism and the media. So anything to do with foreign aid and charity work and diplomacy. And likewise, it provides the fundamental skills in debate and critical thinking to support career paths in politics or the civil service or social work. So now that we've answered or attempted to answer, because it's obviously to study RE is a long list of reasons why too many to ever go over in a single video. I will now break down for you what the actual GCSE course is made up from. And you have two components within RE. Component one is the study of two religions, okay, and the beliefs, teachings, and practices of them. Now, at TFS, we have selected Christianity because it's the traditional religion of the UK and Buddhism. Now, component two doesn't just deal with religions, it deals instead with philosophical and ethical themes. Now you study four of these themes and the themes we've selected to study are the existence of God and revelation, religion, peace and conflict, religion, crime and punishment, and religion, human rights and social, social justice. So you can see immediately that RE interlinks with citizenship quite a lot here. Now, component one, as I said, you will study Christianity and Buddhism. Now, the study of these religions is in no way to convince you of the truth of them or to indoctrinate you into one of their belief systems. Instead, it's really to achieve mastery of the knowledge of which these religions build their faith upon. So this includes studying their religious texts, their belief about divine beings such as God, their practices, their core values. And whilst Christianity and Buddhism may have many extreme differences, I think it will really surprise you as well how many similarities they have in terms of their values towards kindness and compassion. Now component two 
is all about those themes, as I said, rather than a study of religions. Now, the first theme is the existence of God and revelation. Now, here we will be looking at philosophical arguments both for the existence of God and against the existence of God and seeing how those weigh up next to each other, which one is stronger and why. We will also be exploring in this theme the nature of the divine, so the characteristics of God, or if some religions believe so, gods themselves. Okay? Theme D is religion, peace, and conflict. Now, this one is really something to get your teeth into. This covers religion in relation to violence, terrorism, and war in the world. So religious attitudes, for example, towards the construction of weapons of mass destruction, like nuclear weapons. So how religion and belief in the 21st century navigates ideas like peace, justice, forgiveness, reconciliation. If you go down to E, religion, crime and punishment, here we will look at how religion attempts to justify or condemn, so I mean say it's wrong, different types of punishment like the death penalty or corporal punishment, which means physical punishment, being physically hit rather than just um, your freedoms taken away. It also looks at the causes of crime and the idea of forgiveness, about whether if someone from a religious perspective commits a crime we would consider so hideous and unforgivable, perhaps in religion, is forgiveness more important than punishment of the crime itself? It's an interesting concept to explore. Theme F is about religion in regards to human rights and social justice. So here we look at wealth and poverty in regards to religion. The status of women and treatment of homosexuals in different religions, as well as racial prejudice and discrimination. So this theme particularly, so theme F is very, very relevant, especially if you keep up and watch the news of today, with some of the global discussions happening at the moment to do with societal acceptance and tolerance. So those two components are both weighted and judged by written exams. Each written exam will last one hour, 45 minutes, and both of them are worth 50% of your GCSE. So component one, overall 96 marks, and component two, 96 marks as well. If you've got any other questions, please feel free to email me on my work email. I hope you choose religious studies as your GCSE option, and I really look forward to hearing from you year nine. Take care, bye-bye.